Hey gang, well it's been a while since I've done any kind of a video and I got a couple of things I want to go over uh, that are regarding our, our little friend the T2i and um, something new about it as well. Uh, I was hoping a while back that we'd have the last word on the new Magic Lantern software but uh, unfortunately, well no, fortunately uh, the guy who is writing the software just keeps coming up with new stuff. So as of February 8th 2011, where we are right now, I think he's got just about everything that you'd ever want in this software. And I got to admit, it's some amazing stuff. So um, what I want to, uh, to show off, I'm going to switch over to the other camera for just a minute, just to give you an idea of some of the features. Now before I get started, let me stress that I'm not recommending that you put this software in your camera, firmware, whatever you want to call it. What I am saying is that if you do, you're on your own. If something happens to your camera, sorry, I can't do anything about it. So far, nobody's hurt their camera. However, there is a situation where you could have a problem. And let's take a look at our camera for just a minute. Now we're going to have to switch over to a different area. All right, let's go to Menu. And... All right, you see there where it says firmware version 1.09? Forget all this other stuff for just a minute. Firmware version 1.09. If your camera says anything but that, forget this part, it's the magic lantern part. If your camera says 1.06 or 1.0.8, you're going to have to update to the new Canon software before you can load the magic lantern software. Otherwise, you could have problems. All right, now let's get back to video and I'll show you what this software can do. Now right away you'll notice some differences. The major one is the uh, the monitoring of the audio at the very top. You can see now that when you set your microphone uh, to in the camera, the one built in or uh, one that you plug in, you can now monitor with meters. You've also got, uh, my favorite function is called uh, focus peaking and that's right here. Watch Watch when we get to it. I'm hoping this will show up all right. Once we hit something and get a focus on it, and of course it's not wanting to play today. Let's try something here on the desk. All right, you see those green dots that are showing up all over the place? That's actually telling you that you've got good focus. Oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> this is some of the best stuff you can see. As you move into focus on anywhere in, the, in range, let me clear the screen just for a second there. So that's something else you can do. You hold the button down and you can clear the screen. And, and there's a lot of information that I still don't really understand, but uh, we're getting there. Now, let's go into the actual menus themselves. You see, some of the things that you can set. Audio meters, you can set the gain now, you can turn the automatic gain control off, finally. Um, you can add more gain to uh, the left and the right side. You can add some filters. Uh, you can go with whatever microphone that you want. Let me scroll down to that input internal mic. You can go with an external mic on the right side and use the internal mic on the left side, which isn't bad for logging. Uh, you can use an external microphone. You can uh, use an internal microphone on the left side, and the exterior microphone is balanced. I mean, it's just some really neat stuff. Oh, and this is a nice one, too. If you leave it on automatic, it will know immediately when you plug a microphone in, whether it's the internal or the external. Now, let's uh, switch that back to internal. And actually, he's added a couple of new things. Oh, and now you can monitor the audio via the USB line from the camera. That means that you can use your headsets if you have the proper adapter, so that's something important, too. Now, the global draw function, that means all of these things that we're seeing on the screen, and let me come out for just a minute, so you can all this stuff that you can see here. In fact, let me get some focus going here so you can see it. Now you see these lines? I hope these are showing up. The lines around the outboard side here are, um, are uh, 16 by 9 screens. Now that's something else that we can change. We can uh, and find it. That's the crop marks they call it. We can switch and turn them off. You can go with a CinemaScope size screen. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now, I don't know why I'm getting this funny stuff down here on the bottom. It could just be this little monitor acting up. I don't know. But um, let's move on. You can others. Let's see. There's a, a round one for 
give you an idea of where you'd be shooting for television or a 4.3 screen. And let me put it back to the uh, high definition 16 by 9. And that's these lines, the blue and, the, and that aqua line that you see around the outside there. All right, now let's move on to some other things. You can set the thing to clear the screen at either the half shutter uh, when you press the button, or it can just be on all the time. Look, there, the, the screen is completely cleared. Now you've got nice, clean output from the camera, and that turns everything off. So now it's just whatever is coming out of the camera you can see on your monitor. And that means the monitor on the back of the camera, too, not just an external monitor. Now I'm going to leave it to half shutter. That's where I like it. Focus peaking. There's a lot of settings for this. If you use the software, definitely um, get it, uh, the information from the, uh, the README file that's built in. Uh, let's see now. I don't know. This focus graphing and live view zoom. Oh, live view zoom. Sure, you can change how much. The, you know, you, when you press that button up on the top part of the camera that uh, increases the size of the picture so you can focus it, you can now adjust that. You can make it go... Uh, just five times, just ten times, or five by t five and ten. I leave it at five. It seems to be enough for me for folks. Now that I got the focus peaking, I don't need that quite as much. Uh, Q scale, that's one I still don't really understand. That has to do with the bit rate going into the camera, and really has to do with faster cards than I'm using. I'm still using a, a, a class four card, so this doesn't help me very much. Uh, other features I'd recommend you read about, uh, let's see, you know, the high dynamic range stuff, that's for photos where it'll shoot several at different uh, amounts of uh, light into the camera, I don't know, I, I don't get any of that, you know, the trap focus, all that stuff, that's great for fo photographs, it's not something I really understand, but here's one of the more important things, now let's take it down the ISO. Now, if you remember, ISO used to be 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, all the way up to 6400 in those increments. But now, look, let's start at the bottom. Look at this 100, 110, 115, 125, 140, 160, which is an important one, 170, 185, 200, 220, 235, 250, 280. Look at the scale. Look at that. Who knew this camera had this built in? Well, there it is. Now, another thing. You can adjust the shutter. That depends on the lens that you've got. If you're using a kit lens, that works real well. Um, same thing with the aperture. And now, look at all the variation we can have in the white balance. We can set it by degrees Kelvin. This is amazing. I mean, now... You've got the opportunity to set this. I got this thing way too hot coming into the camera. All right, here, let's back that off some. Anyway, you can adjust it any way you want. You don't have to just rely on what the camera decides. Uh, let's see. There's some other things I haven't figured out yet. The, the white balance shift, I have no idea. I just know what works so far for me. Let's move on a little bit. Uh, let's see. This, again, this rack focus thing. I, don't know. I hope somebody else figures it out because honestly, I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, you can save the configuration that you just loaded. And then, as you can see, there's the information about Magic Lantern, and that takes us back to the first menu. Anyway, I was saying, it's really amazing what it can do. And if you're going to use the thing, I think you're going to be in love with it just like I am. And it just seems to get better and better every time there's a new build. Who knows how many more there are going to be, but uh, so far, I've been doing some amazing stuff with this piece of software. All right, now, let's move on from that. It was just announced yesterday, or day before, I guess it was yesterday, the 7th, that Canon is going to release a camera called the T3i. Yep, it's pretty much the T2i with a swivel screen. Honestly, that's about it. The best news for anybody that hasn't bought a T2i yet or wants to get another T2i, they're probably going to discontinue that camera, this camera. And when they do, the prices are going to drop. So expect to see T2i prices coming down. They're already down about 100 bucks. I think you can pick one up from B&H Photo for about 750 to 800 with the kit lens. And that's getting great. I mean, this is a great time to have to be buying cameras. Uh, as the prices come down. Yeah, you're going to say, oh man, I wish I'd waited. No, don't wish you had waited. 
just do what I always say and just get out there and keep shooting. And I'm not going to finish with that because uh, I need to add one more thing. I've got a few more projects I want to get to, and we're going to start talking about accessories the next time. And uh, as you can see right there on the front, that's a new 50 millimeter lens. I don't know why I'm in love with these things so much, but I just bought another one. And um, I'm having a ball with it. Anyway, we've got a lot of things coming up to do with uh, 3D, uh, with accessories for the camera, and with a new movie project that I'm working on. So, and now it's time for me to say, keep shooting. But really, that's not the end, because... Now, let's make that the end. Keep shooting.